What's up guys? Welcome to Viabel Tutorials. Today we're going to be finishing up the GoPro Night Lapse tutorial that we started over on my website right here. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So you shot a time you shot your first night lapse last night and now you're wondering how the hell do you get this on your computer? So there's two ways of doing that. The one number one way I recommend is grabbing your SD adapter, taking out your micro SD, plugging it in and plugging that into your computer. The second method is by just simply grabbing a USB cord and plugging in your GoPro camera to the computer. Uh, using the SD adapter is about 50% faster and highly recommended because GoPro videos tend to be very large. So moving right along, go find your GoPro or SDXC on your uh, Windows Explorer, go to the DCIM and go to the most recent GoPro f uh, folder. Each folder has a thousand elements in it, a thousand videos or pictures, and automatically new ones get made as you film more. So if you took a lot, if you took a four day time lapse, you're probably gonna have a lot of files. And it's kinda, it's kind of annoying to deal with because everything takes really long to export and import. But, so here's my night, night lapse pictures from last night. What I'm gonna do is go Control A, Control C, and then I'm going to go to my directory or any anywhere where I want to store all these pictures uh, temporarily. I'm going to go here, new folder, and just create a new folder, night lapse pictures, or anything else you want to name it. Uh, organization is really important because after doing it a few night lapses, you're going to have a lot of pictures built up and a lot of content um, and it's really easy to get lost and lose videos and clips that you really liked so make sure you stay organized um, so once you have your pictures uploaded to your uh, to your computer you can go back to the SDXC go to your DCIM and you can delete the files uh, from your GoPro no sense in cluttering that up Okay, so once all these are in this new folder, bada bang, go over here, open up GoPro Studio. GoPro Studio is free, you can download it on gopro.com, I'll have a link in the, in the description, and it's a really easy program for uh, compiling all your pictures into a time lapse. Super simple, super easy to use, and I'd recommend using it. Okay, so go find all those pictures. Control A, drag them into the import new files. Okay, go down here, give her a name. I'm just gonna do 30 or 3.20.16 night lapse. Uh, change the directory to wherever you want it to be saved to. Okay, add clip to conversion list. Convert all. Done. Now you just wait for this to uh, process and convert over to a .avi file, which is a video file, and then I'm going to meet you over in Premiere Pro. Okay, so once you have your clip converted to an AVI time lapse, you're going to want to go make a new Premiere Pro project. Um, in the project, you don't have to worry about the settings or anything. Uh, once you just drag in the first clip, It'll ask you, do you want to change your sequence settings? And just say yes. That's just by dragging the fr your time lapse clip into the timeline. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, you can just go up here to sequence settings and to follow along with me. For right now, we're using a frame size of 4,000 by 3,000 uh, and 30 frames per second. Okay. So, the, for editing a night lapse, most of the editing is just actually all the editing is in the color unless you're doing multiple shots but we're doing a single time-lapse shot so we're just going to be working with the color right now and we're going to keep it short and simple um, this is the easiest way to make most night lapses look pretty good bring out the stars uh, and add a nice filter to make it look cinematic or best highest quality um, so we're going to come up here to color make sure you're in color go over to the Lumetri color, hit the master. We're going to be working with basic correction and creative. That's it. We, 
Uh, I'll touch on the other things in a more advanced video lesson, but trying to keep it short and simple. We'll keep doing this. Okay. So, for this shot here, I'm going to be... First off, we need two shots. We need, we need to copy and paste this clip. So, control C, control V. Put the second one on top of the first one. Okay, now we have two shots. Uh, this will come into play later. Right now, we're going to be editing the, the color on the top one. Leave the bottom one just the raw clip. So, pick a shot, pick a time in the shot where the sky is exposed, and this is what the majority of the time lapse looks like. Looks like. Go over here to contrast, bring it up to in between 25 and 40, depending on your shot type. Uh, the contrast is consistent. We don't need to change that or play with that any longer. Uh, just find a good spot that you like, and you might have to come back to this after editing all the other effects and uh, find a perfect spot for your clip. Highlights. So highlights and whites are going to be for bringing out more stars. Only problem is they also bring out they make the sun or the moon and the horizon really bright and overpowering so uh, we're going to have to deal with that you got to be careful about that I bring my highlights up to yeah high teens yeah I'd say under 40 uh, it's all up to you on your time lapse my whites yep I like that 25 okay then shadows and blacks are gonna, what we're going to use to balance out some of this uh, overexposure and super bright light. So bring down the shadows to somewhere that looks good and looks natural. It's going to add depth to the picture and some uh, more contrasting colors. And it also really brings out the stars. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but the shot we have right now has many more stars than the shot we started with. Um, continuing on with the shadows, I'm going to perfect that. Yeah, so negative 35 is looking pretty good for this individual lapse. I've gone as high as negative 45, and it's some, and sometimes you don't need it. Um, blacks, let's see, where does this look good? Yeah, my blacks, I really don't need a touch for this time lapse. I'm just going to put them at a negative. Uh, Negative five looks okay. Okay, so then go down to your saturation. This is how much color is going to be brought out in the time lapse. Um, you can adjust it to where you see fit. I ca I'm kind of liking. I like to add a little bit more color and blues, so I'm going to bring it up to 110. Um, yeah, that's all you need to work with there. Then go over to your creative look I use sign space and that's what I would recommend uh, other than that you could probably use blue steel or find another one that fits your purposes um, intensity intensity should definitely be kept under 50 um, I like to bring it all the way down to zero and then move it up slowly to find the spot that I like it the most should be right here 23 if you're noticing that it's getting a little bit overly uh, black and contrasted in like one area such as this in the top right corner that's because of your uh, blacks and shadows so you can go adjust that accordingly yeah I just brought my blacks up to um, positive 11 actually and it got and it got rid of some of that stark contrast and color um, so now that's looking pretty good I like I like how I can see the green in the trees and all the lights and different elements and depth in the picture now. Um, to compare to compare to what the original clip was, you can just toggle the eye down here and you can see the major differences, we uh, changes we made with the color. Um, so you can play with this to make it look exactly how you want it, but uh, that, that I'm going to keep it like that for now. Um, last step of doing the color is going through the entire lapse and seeing if the color ever uh, if the color effects become too overpowering or too much so right here um, in this in this like section of the time lapse 
You can notice the clouds are really bright and lit up and it's kind of an eyesore and overpowering to uh, the back image of the stars and also it got really really dark back here and it's just not looking good everything is kind of silhouetted so we're going to need to change this but not change the beginning of the effects if that makes sense we want it stable so I like the effects I like the color correction all the way up until right about here this is where a lot of clouds start moving in so we're going to need to change uh, the, co the color correction right about here so we, all you're going to do is click on the top clip the, uh, the clip go over to effects control lumetri color and then uh, drop down to basic correction as well as the creative and then go down to highlights and do a uh, toggle animation or set a keyframe for highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, and intensity. Okay. So this is a spot I'm starting to not like. So this is actually where it needs to be changed. Yeah, so I actually move the keyframes to the last spot that you that the image looked good for your time lapse. And then move your uh, your cursor to wherever the color starts changing and you need to change the color correction. So right about here, the color correction needs some serious updating. All you have to do, you don't have to set any more keyframes, you can just adjust it right here in the effects controls. Um, since there's so much more white now, I'm gonna drop my highlights down so those clouds aren't lit up like the and I'm going to drop my whites down. Yep, that's looking better. Okay, then bring my shadows up. So I, I'm using less effects now. Also, the intensity might be a little bit much with that much cloud in it. It is. So I'm just going to move my intensity to 10. Okay, so now we're going to continue on with the night lapse and see how that affects those effects hold. Pretty good. Yeah, I definitely like the color at the end of it. Uh, and the beginning. Uh, yeah, the color's pretty consistent. It holds true and it doesn't it doesn't look too overly color corrected or any crazy effects or contrasts in there. So it looks good. You can compare it to the original just by doing the toggle. So you can see that. Yeah, you can see the big changes. So, once you have your color correction all done and uh, everything is the way you want it, you can go up here and say your in and out points is I, O, First step, are you going to be exporting this for YouTube and Facebook or Vimeo, anything like that, or is it for your own personal uh, portfolio or website? Because for YouTube, your sequence settings are going to be different. You're not going to have this big square, this 4,000 by 3,000. You're going to have to go up here to sequence settings, and your frame size is going to be 3840. horizontal and 2160 vertical keep the 30 frames per second okay so essentially you just made this a 4k video with a 16 to 9 aspect ratio which you see on YouTube so now it's ready for uploading or exporting only problem is when we change the sequence settings it actually zoomed in the picture to a place that you may have not wanted it and we have complete control over that still so we are going to go edit the picture yep so click on your top clip go to motion position and then go to the right side the Y and so we can adjust the position of this top layer 
I kind of like I, I like it positioned uh, more straight up so I can catch the moon coming in in this tree. It looks better. It's all depending on your time lapse and your environment. And then we're going to add a really cool kind of, not really cool, but a really easy effect that you see most people use in time lapses, which is the slide effect where the, the screen will slowly kind of pan while you're, while you're filming. To do this, all you're going to do is set a keyframe on the position on your start position. So my start position is going to be at the very top. So I set a keyframe there. Move that keyframe to the very edge, front edge of the video. And go to the very end of the video. And set another keyframe for where you want it to move to. So I want it to move all the way down to here where I can see the horizon at the end. And this is also kind of a cool pan because it follows the, the flow of the sky throughout my time lapse. Uh, just a quick unique feature you can add in uh, when you're exporting your video to YouTube or any other social network. Okay, now that we're finished, we're going to go up here and you can render in and out now. And after you have that rendered, uh, there's this yellow bar will be green. Then you can go up here, make sure you have your sequence selected. Go to File, Export, Media. Okay. Export Settings. You need uh, Format H.264 is what YouTube recommends. And then on your uh, preset, go all the way down and scroll with this little arrow. I don't know why they don't have the scroll bar, but go all the way to the bottom, and then you're going to see the YouTube 2160p 4K. That is the best settings already set up for you to uh, export this video in 4K. Uh, back to the video, so you can see that it's 3840 by 2160. 30 frames per second is what you want. Progressive. Okay, um, I like to do render at maximum depth. And then bitrate enco encoding is uh, important for Google or YouTube. Uh, the YouTube settings are actually already set up for 40 uh, megabytes per second uh, for the 4K. You can move your maximum bitrate up to about 45 if you want to. Uh, and then these settings change based off what uh, resolution you're exporting your video at. Then come down here, click use maximum render quality again. Estimated file size is 175 megabytes for that, that couple second clip. Um, I'll put name. Name is, name is important for, very important for organization. Okay, I'm just going to throw it on my desktop for now. Export audio, export video. Everything looks good. Let's go to the audio. You want stereo, high quality. Uh, the bitrate should be 320. And yep, everything looks good. Uh, you, you can go ahead and save that preset as your YouTube 4K preset. Um, and then export. Congratulations on finishing your first GoPro night lapse. I hope it looks great. I'm coming out with tutorials on advanced color correction as well as a tutorial on the different types of night lapse you can get and all the settings that go with that. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.